Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by Lions.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined as always by Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we are looking at eight games here on Tuesday night for you guys in the NBA. In this game, we're taking a look at the Lake Show playing host to the Memphis Grizzlies right now. Obviously struggling. Lots to talk about in this one. No LeBron as well. Uh, We'll get into all that. Also have another game video up for you guys today as well on this slate with those dubs and the thunder and our player props. As always, uh, make sure you're following along by liking and subscribing to that page. Staying hot on those player props with you guys after a really good night. Shout out Tyrese Halliburton. I also want you to head to thelines.com. You can check out all the great written content we have up there for you guys. Uh, NBA in full swing right now. And we have that odds finder tool up there uh, where you can go ahead and make sure you're getting the best odds available to you from all these books giving you guys bets in the NBA this season. Nate, let's go ahead and jump into this slate right here and then talk about these Grizz and Lakers. Yeah, we got Washington minus seven and a half at Detroit. Milwaukee's minus seven at Orlando. Then the Sixers on a back-to-back there, plus two in Minnesota. Charlotte's plus 10 at the Red Hot Knicks. Uh, Jalen Brunson's very much questionable, though. Nets minus six at Houston. The other game we break down, Warriors minus four. At OKC, the Yaz plus nine at the Mavs. Uh, That total has been bet up, I believe, about six points since it's opened uh, with the new look Mavs. And then we got Grizz, basically a pick them here at the Lakers, plus one for Memphis. Totals at 226, not moving much. It's a, a fair total. It's very, very tough to pick either way. I mean, the Lakers trend under without LeBron, as we know. And Memphis, I mean, I guess we got to lead with the fact that there's no John Morant and they're still without Steven Adams and Brandon Clark's out for a year now. Um, And those two guys are absolutely vital for what they do in terms of owning the paint. We've talked, you know, this is probably like our fifth show where we're talking about how badly they're missing Steven Adams and how we want to fade them on the road. Um, And once again, yeah, they're two and eight without Steven on the road. The only wins at Detroit and Houston teams that uh, have the worst records in the NBA, uh, just to reiterate. And um, I mean, they're saving grace. It, it, it's with, without Ja, it's, it's Tyus Jones ball now, which is to say it's just like solid team basketball, which is to say we're going to move it around, make the extra pass and try to hit threes. And Memphis is not a good three point shooting team. They happened to get really hot against the Clippers last time out. Uh, hit 18 threes at a 53% clip. That might might be probably a season high, uh, just completely unsustainable. And then that was for a 51 point third quarter. And then the clips just gave them the clamps and they scored 17 in the fourth to somehow lose. I don't know the last time somebody had a 51 point quarter and lost. Uh, they, They gave up 35 free throw attempts to the Clippers. And then this is the biggest rebounding margin I think I've ever seen. 53 to 26 giving up 13 offensive rebounds to the Clippers. Not an extremely good rebounding team either. And I mean, this is what, now we're talking about the Anthony Davis Lakers, which is to say, like, they got to board up. They're going to have to press those margins and get free throws. Second highest free throw rate behind the Sixers uh, over their last few games here. So it's definitely ripe for the Lakers to to have some success down low, have some success getting to the line and and limit. I mean, they're, they're good three-point defense at home, so limit Memphis being able to do that. Without Ja, they're not as good in transition. Um, and, and, I mean, there's some numbers like Bain and Jaron Jackson are going to step up. You'd think they don't have great numbers against the Lakers by any means. Bain, 17 points per game in his career. Pretty efficient from three, but that's not as the number one option. Uh, and Triple J is has really been, you know, kind of worked by Anthony Davis. Nine career against AD, 13 points per game on a 99 offensive rating. Pretty much a non-factor. He's much worse on the road. The Grizz offense in general, much worse on the road. Uh, they don't. They just don't do anything particularly well on offense. If you look at their road, I, I couldn't find one thing that they're top 10 in, in even percentage of points scored, which is to say there's no consistency. Like, uh, you know, what do they do? And then on the road, they're the second lowest offensive rebounding rate. Like I said, you know, struggling to board up. That's all about want to and, uh, you know, effort. And it's just, it's got to be really deflating for them to have this situation with Ja, uh, which we, as we just, to just anyone who hasn't heard about it. Yeah. He's, uh, he's just brandishing a gun on, on his uh, social media page. And so he's out indefinitely 
from the team, um, you know, who knows when he's coming back. And that's really got to weigh on the players too, because it's like, who knows when our guy's coming back in addition to the fact that we don't have two vital bigs uh, and, and the Lakers are absolutely desperate. So I, I think they will be able to capitalize on this situation and get the win at home. Uh, Anthony Davis leading the way. Well said. <laughs> um, the thing about Ja too, is he was in a nightclub, by the way, after that Denver game. In- interestingly as well, there was apparently a players only meeting literally before that incident happened where Steven Adams called them together and said, everyone needs to start acting better on the road, getting to bed earlier, blah, blah, blah. And hours later, uh, Ja is suspended from the team for a couple games. Yeah, it's it's up in the air. What are you going to learn in two days or game like a week of time what he's going to like change everything it's either come back to the team or 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 not and he's obviously going to come back at some point but for this game specifically down low big time i i don't i love you know for the lakers everything going on down there that's why ad's props are absolutely insane for him to get 14 rebounds on fanduel right now only gets you back minus 136 on your money uh 29 and a half points for him or 28 and a half if you want worse odds like they expect him to go to bananas based on a lot of what you just said, 35 free throw attempts to the clips, 53 to 26. Like, you know, they they got out rebounded by more rebounds than they got. Uh, Do that math if you want to figure it out. So, um, you know, for, for the, the last 15 games, I don't know. Is Steven Adams really that important? Like, is he really, really that important? He's, he's more of a situational player. He was getting close to 28 minutes, but when he got hurt, but like, Oh man, it's crazy that they would be going from, you know, basically, top two in second chance points, um, fast break points. They're still pretty good, obviously, because of Ja, but not getting out on the break quite as much if they can't get a defensive rebound. That's the reason their their fast break points have gone down a little bit for them. Still a lot of them, but... um, And then, you know, their opponent's second chance points and everything that they're doing, third most second chance points given up, like... AD is going to feast. There's just no way he doesn't. Jaron Jackson Jr. is not it uh, against uh, Anthony Davis. Maybe he can do a few things in that one-on-one defensive. He, he's better. Uh, you know, he, He's obviously going to win defensive player of the year based on his ability to block shots, but that's not a one-on-one matchup with Anthony Davis where he's getting the ball off of a, you know, a side pick and roll going towards the hoop down the middle of the lane. Like, Good luck. Good, good luck with anybody, uh, even if Steven Adams was there. But um, that's going to be the the entire you know premise of the Lakers ga- uh, game plan tonight. And I, obviously it makes complete sense um, when you look at what they do without Ja, um, the, the Grizzlies this season. You know, obviously it's just not the same as last season where last season they, they lost him and didn't really miss a beat. This year, their offensive rating drops five points. They seem to play faster. Um, which is interesting, but their offensive rating is so much worse that they're still, you know, not even scoring more points without Ja. Obviously, they're scoring more with him. Um, 25 more free throw attempts a game is a huge reason for it. Uh, that the Grizzlies usually, you know, get the edge against their opponents in that case. But as you mentioned, they just hemorrhaged those 35 free throw attempts to the Clips, who also don't even really get to the line that much. Maybe a bit more with Russell Westbrook, but that still hasn't been the 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 bulk of their game. If anything, it's been a knock on PG this season that he hasn't been getting to the line as as a guy who should be getting. Six to seven attempts so um for Bain yeah he he scores a few more points but once again those numbers uh, against the Lakers it's not a, a good matchup for him either in this situation um as I just Jared Vanderbilt as we call just crushing it on defense like as good of a wing defender as you could want in the NBA right now who also gets to you know is, is getting those eight rebounds as well since he, he joined the team so everything spells favors it sort of seems to be in LA's favor uh when it comes to the the key stats like we said everything around the rim and then the pace of this game where I think that the Lakers can kind of limit it I would lean under as well except for the fact that the 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 Grizzlies do seem to play a bit faster without Ja for some reason maybe they're just trying to get it and go um to avoid the fact that they don't have him and and they don't have much in a set offense without him breaking a defense down uh but they're still unable to get the same amount of fast break points defensive rebounds so I, I do like LA in this one as well I liked it when they they had it at like plus two and a half and still really like it with them as the favorite yeah I don't really understand how the Lakers beat the Warriors again um despite you know Steph coming back and being Steph uh well I mean really it was just AD being clutched down the stretch right it it is the get on my back scenario that we talked about joked about and their their offense is really pulled up now without LeBron because you have a healthy Anthony Davis. I mean, they were averaging just like 108 without him. Now they're up to 112 on the season. Um, They have tended to go under without Braun, but over in two of their last four, including the last time they were at Memphis. So that is why we shy away from it a little bit. 
Uh, three point percentage better without Westbrook. If you look at since that shook up, I mean, since the trade where they got better, we didn't even mention D'Angelo Russell's questionable again. Honestly, that's probably a plus in, in, on, in terms of a two way player. Austin Reeves, not a great defender either, but, um, you know, just he's helpful enough on offense. Um, yeah. The Lakers depth is just better than the Grizzlies at this point because they, they, they're missing those key guys. You're talking about guys like Roddy and LaRavia now stepping in to try to take their turns on AD. Doesn't seem like it's going to go that well. Uh, by the way, that last win for Memphis, Ja led them with a 39 point triple double. He also led them to two wins over the Lakers uh, the last couple seasons with 40 plus. Um, and AD in that last game had five blocks. So while his his other st- uh, props are, are ridiculously high, I am interested in like the, the three blocks or the four steal slash blocks uh, as he becomes that kind of clutch stopper. Memphis is a team that will try you down low, right? Uh, especially if the three's not trying falling. So that's why he got the five blocks. I think that is pretty sustainable uh, if you're looking at a prop in this game. 100%. And I just want to bring up one more point that actually extends a bit out further than than down low as we keep talking about that as the key area for the game. The other uh, the other area that, that I get to now talk about the, the Lakers being good at is wing defense and wing offense. Uh, and they now have an advantage over a team last year that had D'Anthony Melton in Memphis. They had Kyle Anderson, who was as versatile, of a, you know, able to play down low, but also able to play out on the wing uh, as well. Um, and, and now, you know, you talk about Jared Vanderbilt, Malik Beasley uh, and company being there for the Lakers. It's and even Rui. Um, it's, it, it's just how it works. It's what we've been talking about since they lost Kuzma and KCP and Caruso. Um, and now we should be talking about it once again for this this Memphis team who is not as good and not as deep as they were last year because they didn't seem to think that they needed a guy like D'Anthony Mellon, who's coming up huge right now as a defensive player covering to get the best player on the other team all the time for the 76ers this season. So another advantage for the Lakers right now that they wouldn't have had like three weeks ago so uh interesting times but that is all the time we have for you in this one so make sure to like and subscribe to that page also check out the dubs and thunder video and our player props that we're staying hot on you guys with you guys on this week so until we see you next happy betting